Hey guys, Quantix here. Welcome back to another video. The gameplay you are watching is a game of Crazy King on Sword Beast. I will warn you now that I do not go for the objective at all in this game. It's my first game of the day and I usually like to slay as much as possible during my warm up games to make sure I am on top of my shot. So that being said, I do get a pretty good KD, but the gameplay is not what I want to talk about. As some of you know, PAX was this past weekend and there was an event called Halo Fest at a venue. During Halo Fest, 343 announced some big changes about the upcoming Halo game, Halo Combat Anniversary, and some new information about the title update for Halo Reach. A few weeks ago, I posted a gameplay of the first appearance of the title update in action. The most notable things taken from that video was no bloom on the DMR, beat down bleed through, and an armor log nerf. During the time, it was a back and forth argument of what was real and what wasn't, because none of it had actually been confirmed by 343. For example, there's a situation where the player went into armor lock and got hit with a nade while in it. Immediately after the nade exploded, the player came out of armor lock. Many people claim that the nade destroyed the armor lock, while other people thought that he just came out of the armor lock just after the nade exploded. So thankfully 343 gave us some new information, but most of it is already known. So the first thing they announced was bloom configuration. Many people knew that bloom was going to be tweaked, but most people thought it was going to be a toggle, either on or off. 343 did one step further. They made it completely configurable by press send. You can have it at 100% bloom, which plays just like it does now, or 0%, which is none at all, or any other percent in between to try perfectly balanced the weapon while making it reliable. The people at 343 did say there's probably not going to be any playlist with absolute zero bloom, because that, be that results in the DMR being completely overpowered. But they did say that putting bloom at something such as 15% was a perfect balance between reliability and balance. Now the problem I see with this is how will players get the game types where bloom is a preferred percent. 343 already announced that they did not have any time to build a new user interface to implement these new features. So instead of customizing a game type to how you want it, you have to go to matchmaking, find a game type with the closest settings you want, and save it. So that's enough on Bloom, and I'm sure there'll be more specifics on it closer to launch. So the next thing 343 announced was Bleed Through. I've gotten a lot of questions asking what Bleed Through means, so I'll give them my best shot to explain what it means. In Halo 3, there was a Bleed Through system, and currently in Reef, there isn't. In short, bleed through means that a beatdown will not only kill the shields but also damage health. The amount of shields present at the time of the beatdown influences how much health is taken. If the shields are low enough, beatdown will be able to take down the shields and also kill your health. And in most situations, you would also get a kill. There are people asking why would they do this. Well, let's think of it this way. Player A and player B meet in a close quarter situation. Both have full shields and both have full health. Player A starts shooting while player B just sprints up to player A. They meet at beatdown range, and before player A can kill the shield of player B, they both beat each other down. Now they have to both at the same health with no shields. So why should player A be at the same situation as player B, even though he wastes his own ammo shooting? Currently, any shots that player takes at another would be useless if he beat down before popping the shields. In the bleed through system, those shots would not be wasted. Using that last example, player A would have killed player B with the beatdown with a new bleed through system in place. Hopefully that made sense, but it could be hard explaining bleed through to new players. So the last big confirmation in my opinion has to be the armor abilities. It has been confirmed, and I repeat, it has been confirmed that armor lock has been nerfed. One change that will be made to armor lock is that no longer is a reset button when getting stuck. Currently if you stick somebody and they go into armor lock, the sticky nade will shut off and they won't get a, and you won't get a kill. In the update, the sticky grenade will remain on your body and kill you while in armor lock. Another change to armor lock is that the damage received while in armor lock will transfer to your armor lock charger. This means that every shot received while at armor lock will reduce the amount of time you are able to stay in armor lock. In the video I posted a couple weeks ago, the nade was powerful enough to destroy the armor lock, which is why the player came out right away. Also, how much the damage depletes your armor lock is configurable. Both no user interface, I'm not sure how you will customize it to your liking. The other armor ability being nerfed is active camo. There are two tweaks to active camo. One being the overall time a player is used to is able to use camo, and one is the amount of bonus time. They will be shortening the amount of time you can stay in camel and they will reduce the bonus time. So bonus time is when you do not move at all while using camel. Currently if you do not move at all and you're in camel, your camel will last a long time. This makes it really easy for players to sit on a perch, stay camel, stay still and just snipe people off. So they will be reducing that time limit. So those are the biggest changes I see coming from the title update. But there are some smaller changes as well. But the first small change is there will no longer be any sword blocking. No longer will weapons be able to block the attack of an enemy sword. The only exception is this with this is a sword versus sword battle. 
This will play exactly how it did in Halo 3 where you have to do your sword battles. Another little minor tweak is people with Xboxes with no hard drives will now be able to play co-op campaign and firefight. So those are the changes that have been brought with the title update. The 343 also surprised everybody with their announcement of the 3 shot pistol returning from Halo Combat Evolved. And they will be putting this pistol into multiplayer in Reach also. They announced the pistol will be playable in certain playlists and it is supposed to bring back the Combat Evolved feeling they are trying to achieve with the new Halo Combat Evolved anniversary. The pistol is a 3 shot kill, 2 to the body and 1 shot to the head will kill somebody any range anywhere on the map. The pistol is also automatic so holding the trigger will result in a rapid fire but the rapid fire will also cause bloom. So in addition to that 343 announced that there will be beta hopper playlist that will be available to people to test these play these new title update changes before the actual title update releases with combat of all the anniversary. It has not been confirmed whether these beta hopper playlists will be playable to anyone or certain people. These beta hopper playlists are supposed to come out late September early October so they're not that far away. 343 also listed some of the new maps that are coming along with Halo Anniversary. The maps are the following. Battle Canyon is a remake of Battle Creek. Solitary, a remake of Prisoner. Ridgeline, a remake of Timberland. Damnation, an Installation 04, which is a new firefight map based off a campaign mission from Combat Evolved. It is also important to note that this firefight mission will also feature Marines fighting alongside you, something that has not been done in the past with firefight. They also said there was a top secret Halo 2 map remake that has not been announced yet, but there are videos on YouTube floating around of gameplay from Headlong, which a lot of people think is the new secret map. So also the maps will all come with two variants. One variant is a classic map, almost an exact replica of the original, and one is a slightly altered version, which is designed to help improve and adjust with new gameplay and other abilities. For example, in Beaver Creek, there is an altered version with tunnels on the side of the creek to help run flags and avoid most of the armor locks and sprinting. So, last but not least, they are going to do some changes with Forge. Not too big, but they are going to adjust the palette. So there will be more items you are, can use and they will be more interesting, they said. For example, like from the new maps, let's say Damination, it has a lot of purple walls and it is, it, they will have a lot more items you can choose. Like I know there's a bridge that connects all three of those little pathway jump things by the waterfall. So it will be the new items in Forge. And along with that, they also said there will be some minor bug tweaks, but they didn't give any specifics. So hopefully they do fix stuff like animation, the, uh, the assassination, actually they did say they did not gonna fix that, so scratch that. But they did not mention anything about a ranking system which kind of sucks, but hopefully there's still time to announce one. I really hope they do bring back a 1 to 50 system, but no word on that so far. And let's see anything that has not been confirmed that we had talked about in the last commentary. We were talking about grenades in the last commentary, but they did not have any information on grenades, so that's about it. Alright guys, I think that wraps it up. up. I have a minute 30 minute, a minute thirty left in the gameplay. As if you haven't noticed yet, I have not died, and I am so close to the unfreaking believable. Well, I do get my 30 close to great there with the invincible. So guys, this is my second commentary, so I hope it at least improved a little bit off my last one, but it's probably still not that great, but... I'm trying to improve and I did take some considerations from last time to help make this commentary at least more enjoyable I hope. So I have one minute left and I'm just going to talk about the gameplay here and if you're in my position never do what I do right here. I got greedy I see there's less than a minute left and I'm so close to that 40 kill streak that I just lose my brain power and I just start doing stuff that you should never do. So I get a kill there. I see people on my radar. I'm freaking out because there's low time left. I got sword block here. I, can ha I hate sword blocks. And would you look at that? Sword block two times in a row. 35 kills three. I was so close to dying right there. That scared me. And these people are right there. I'm so glad they dropped. But right here, never do what I did. I drop down. I'm like, yes, I can do this. 30 seconds left. Let's throw nades. Let me get a double kill. Get that kill. I'm like, yes, roll into a fucking whatever the hell that thing is. And I die. 
So if you're ever in my position, don't ever just do what I did. Don't rush. Stay back. I probably could have got an elite. My, I was 38 and no right there. Two kills away from freaking unbelievable. But I died because I was too greedy. So guys, that's all I gotta say today. My name's Quantix. And if you like what you said, seen here, please give me a like. It really helps me out. And if you're new to our channel, I would appreciate if you guys could subscribe. We'll have a lot more gameplay coming up soon. So that's all I have to say today, guys. I'll see you later.